Uh, Don, Don Russell, I'm glad you're here today. Give it up for Don. Don, you excited? Look at that guy. This guy's awesome, man. And you guys had no idea what was going on apparently this morning, but I'm going to fill you in. Okay, this morning apparently Don, he got up early for church services and uh, he set his alarm clock that was made in Japan for uh, 6 a.m. And, and while his coffee pot that was made in China was perking, uh, he shaved with his electric razor that was made in Hong Kong. And then he put on his dress shirt that was made in Sri Lanka. And of course those classic snazzy slacks that Don always wears. Love you, buddy. Okay, uh, uh, that were made in Singapore, and of course his shoes that were made in Korea. Uh, and then after he cooked his breakfast there on his new electric skillet that was made in India, he sat down with his calculator made in Mexico, Bill, to see how much he could spend today taking me out to lunch. I try, I try. And so after setting his watch that was made in Italy uh, uh, to the radio that was made in Taiwan, he hops in his car that was made in Germany. And then after church services, apparently he's going to go back home and relax for a while and he's going to put on his sandals that are made in Brazil and he's going to get some cheese and crackers, those fancy ones made in France, and then he's going to turn on his TV made in Indonesia. And then Don's probably going to sit there and wonder like us today, why is it so hard for somebody to find a good paying job in America nowadays? <laughs> it makes you wonder, doesn't it? In fact, I think after that story, it's pretty obvious, okay? And believe it or not, this is what's wild, guys. All this interconnectedness with our products and materialism, all this globalism that's going on, especially with our economies, that's not the only thing that it should cause you and I to wonder. Why can't we get a job today? Okay? Uh, believe it or not, folks, the Bible's clear. It should be causing us to wonder if Jesus Christ is about ready to come back and get a church. Okay, and the reason why, folks, is because the Bible clearly said this is exactly the kind of society, all this interconnectedness, even with our economies and things, is what's going to appear on the scene right before the seven-year tribulation begins. That's going to be part and parcel, okay? And it's going to be a horrible time. And, folks, the reason why it's a horrible time, as we've been seeing, is because the Bible is clear. For those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and receive the gift of eternal life, he's done it all. The Bible says you're going to be headed into the seven-year tribulation, and that is going to be your worst nightmare, okay? And that begins at the rapture of the church. And Jesus said it's going to be such a horrible time, folks, that it's the worst time in the history of mankind. And that unless God was merciful in that time frame, the entire human race would be destroyed. But as we've been seeing, praise God, God is not just a God of wrath, which again, I have to say this every single time. That's not bad. Anybody sick and tired of the injustice, the evil, the unrighteousness, and the baloney that's going on even in our own nation? You tired of that? Well, praise God. God's not sitting up there willy-nilly. He's appointed a day. It's called Judgment Day. Bang! The hammer is coming down. He's going to put an end to it. That's good news. But, praise God, he's a God of love as well. And that means he gives us warning signs in advance so we're not caught off guard so we know the tribulation is near and the rapture of the church, hello, it's just around the corner. So in order to keep you and I here at sunrise from experiencing the ultimate bad day of being left behind, folks, we're going to continue our study, that's right, called the final countdown. Now, since I haven't been able the last several weeks to get John to come up here verbally, and uh, it, I don't think it's really feasible for everybody to crowd around his smartphone, that's right, folks, the prophet John is going to speak. Not the one from Revelation, the one we have here. Uh, and that's all right. We've already seen on the number uh, 10 final count sound, according to the prophet John. That's right. You can follow along today is the Jewish people. Number nine is modern technology. Number eight, worldwide upheaval. Number seven, the rise of falsehood. He's going too fast for me. Uh, the number six, the rise of wickedness. Number five, the rise of apostasy. Number four, the rise of a one world religion. Number three, the sign of a rise of a one world government. Give it up for the prophet John. That's right. And that's right, if you were here, the last two times we saw the second sign was the rise of a one world economy, okay? And what we've been seeing is the Bible clearly said when you see all the world's economies coming together as one, and hello, that's happening right now today, okay? Uh, you're in the last days, and we saw that with the chronological proof, the fear manipulation proof, the quotation proof, and last time, the union proof and the American proof. And there, folks, again, as we saw, as gut-wrenching as it is, the Bible says this planet is going to specifically be split up into 10 different economic kingdoms that the Antichrist is going to control, and that very well could be why America might very well not be mentioned in Bible prophecy other than judgment, unfortunately, uh, is because we're going to get swallowed up into that economic union as well. But that's not all. I'm still preaching on this, so guess what, Al? There's got to be more. That's right, Al. You're right there. There is more. Uh, the sixth proof that we know we're really headed for a one world economy, folks, is what I call the currency proof. The currency proof. This is the other half of what's going on in Revelation 13. I'm talking about a cashless society, okay? And believe it or not, folks, that's exactly what the Antichrist needs if he's going to pull off not just his last day's kingdom, this economic global kingdom. He has to have a cashless society if he's going to pull off the mark of the beast. But again, as always, don't take my word for it. Let's listen to God's. Open the Bibles to Revelation 13. 
Revelation 13, once again, let's go back to that classic text. There's a lot going on there that we need to pay attention to. And uh, let's take a look at all the things he needs to pull off this last day society and certainly the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, verse 11 is where we're going to start. When you get there, say moo. Oh, that's music to my ears. I'd almost want to close in prayer, but we got a lot to ground to cover. That's right. Moo is right, is the word. All right, so I stalled enough time. Let's go ahead and let's crack into the text. Verse 11, chapter 13, Revelation says this. And then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. This guy, he had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. Again, inspired by Satan. Now, he exercised all authority of the first beast, the Antichrist, on his behalf, and he made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. And he also performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. And because of these signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, the Antichrist, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. Then he ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And he was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that, listen, it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. And then he forced everyone, small and great, the whole planet, folks, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark where? On his right hand or on his forehead. Why? So that no one, no one, folks, without exception, could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. And we've already been in this text for a couple times, but let's pull out some more stuff that is going on here if we're going to see if this is in fact happening today. Folks, this is the classic text where we see the Bible is clear that believe it or not, against all seemingly odds, when John's writing this 2,000 years ago, it must have seemed like science fiction, but he clearly says the Bible predicted that one day all the inhabitants of the earth are going to be under a universal economy or monetary system that's actually headed up by one guy, the Antichrist. And this one guy literally controls all the buying and the selling on the whole planet, right? The Bible says that one day, how do you know you're in the last days? When you see not just a one world economy, but it's actually satanically inspired. And the last two weeks, what in the world have we been seeing? That's exactly what's taking place now. But this time what I want to bring out is that's not the only thing he needs to pull off this one world economy and the mark of the beast system. Okay, if you're paying attention there, common sense says that he not only needs to combine all the world's economies into one, but listen, he has to combine all the currencies into one, right? And even a step further, okay, at some point he also has to not just combine the currencies into one, but logic tells us that he has to take the money or the currencies around the world and make them electronic. Make them cashless, okay? Why? Because it says he controls all the buying and selling with a mark in the right hand or the forehead, right? And so this tells us, guys, that this has to be some form of electronic payment, Okay, it has to be. It's common sense. You don't just tape, according to this text, you don't just tape a dollar bill to your right hand to make payment. Right? You don't slap 20 bucks to your forehead and pay for your groceries in this text. Right? It's ludicrous. I mean, John already does that at bowling. It freaks me out, John. I'm sorry, but the, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but seriously, folks, it's common sense. Okay, in order for this passage to be pulled off, he not only needs all the economies into one, the currencies into one, but it has to be some form of cashless or electronic system. Right? And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that we see zero signs of you and I, let alone the whole world, ever going to some sort of cashless society to make electronic payments, including our body parts. Yeah, sarcasm gives it away. Uh, you guys know me too well. It's already here, folks. In fact, if you think about it, let's discuss the process that we have slowly but surely methodically been led up into this cashless society, okay? For instance, not long ago, your only option was paper currency. That's it. All right? And if you want to go back to that, it was a barter system. But paper currency uh, uh, is what we have. But then all of a sudden they came across this nifty device called a check. Okay? And uh, how many of you guys remember a check? Because most of us don't even do checks anymore. And that's exactly the point. We'll get to that in a second. Okay? So, so if you didn't have the money on you, they came, hey, well, I'll tell you what. You could write a check for it. Okay? And, but then they came along with this nifty idea, step-by-step -step process. If you didn't have a check along with you, then hey, just charge it to this new thing we've come out with uh, called a credit card. What a nifty device that is, right? And uh, which leads to a lot of debt. And I always like one guy's acronym. He says uh, what it stands for, debt, you know, with credit cards. And he's, that means uh, uh, dumb excuses for buying things. You know what I'm saying? 
And, uh, but anyway, so we got snookered into that, okay, to the credit card. But, uh, but wait a second, if you wanted to be a wise financial steward as a Christian, we're supposed to be, okay, and if you didn't want to, uh, if you didn't have a check and you didn't want to pay the interest uh, on your credit card, then hey man, we, we came out with these things called ATM debit cards, right? And then that way it comes directly out of your account and you're not having to do all that stuff. In fact, we saw if you were here a couple weeks ago, this is not just a trend, it's not just an option, but as of 2010, debit card spending overtook cash spending. So we like this electronic stuff, is the point. In fact, so much so that they've now even combined all these features and much, much more, that's right, into a device that's called a smart card. Okay, notice all these devices. We saw that with the one world government, big brother system, the smart TV, the smartphones, and they weren't really smart. They're using it to monitor us. Well, they got this device called a smart card. Okay, and uh, a smart card, if you don't know, is basically the size of a regular credit card, only this one's got a tiny microchip in this thing. Okay, uh, and that microchip can not only store and receive all kinds of nifty information, but it can be used to make financial transactions as well. Okay, in fact, let's take a look at some of the nifty devices you can do with these newfangled smart cards that they're converting to. Let's take a look. First of all, you could use it as a personal ATM card. Okay, all oh, this is combined in one, folks. This is really nifty, okay? You could use it to make purchases at stores, restaurants, vending machines, gas, toll roads, and that's right, Ruth, et. Okay, comes in handy. Uh, telephone calls, all in one card, man. You can do it all. You don't have to carry all this wad of stuff. No, it's all in this one card, Al. Uh, access to cable and satellite programs, all in this one nifty card. Internet purchases, who doesn't shop online? You can use those same cards, awesome. And, you can, and, and vehicle and building access, we're all getting used to that. Well, the same card does it all, isn't that awesome? Uh, and personal computer access, it replaces all your passwords. Isn't that, if you guys haven't learned this, this is a great technique that some guy actually did apparently. Um, you ever forget your uh, password on your computer? He says, here's what you do. He says, I just relabeled my password for my computer, uh, the word incorrect, so that when I type it in wrong, my computer sp uh, spells back that error message, your password is incorrect. Thank you. <laughs> 20 of you are going to try that today. I know you are. Okay, but listen, you don't even need to do that technique. This is all on one card. It's really nifty. Loyalty programs. Remember we saw all those? You get cheaper groceries? Not. Okay, that was a lie. Uh, airlines, grocery stores. That's right, Ruth. Eck is there again. Rapid check-in, hotel, airlines, and Eck for a third time in a row. And on top of that, all, if that was enough, personal identification holder. Your social security number, your driver's license, your student ID, your health insurance ID, voting information, your picture, your fingerprints. Everything on that card is so nifty. Okay. Now, folks, believe it or not, these new smart cards are, this is their own terminology they're using. This is called the new digital cash or an electronic purse for the ladies. And it's expected to become, for the first time in mankind's history, the world's first universal currency. Why? Because, folks, it is electronic. It's cashless. Who cares nowadays, for the first time in mankind's history, what country you come from? Who cares what currency you have in your country? It doesn't matter anymore. It can all now, for the first time in man's history, be all interchanged electronically anywhere in the world. You can buy and sell anything you want with an electronic form of payment. Interesting. In fact, pretty soon, folks, uh, you may have to use this card to pay for everything. Once you switch to this whole thing and everything's tied into this thing, you think it's bad now? The government's going to love this card. Here could be our soon reality. Check this out. This is wild.
Man, won't that be great when we all convert to cashless? Folks, I'm telling you, I, I really think it's a loaded term. I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord. But I think when John, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says that the Antichrist, with all this mark system all intertwined, okay, and that you won't be able to buy or sell, I really think that's the tip of the iceberg of the matrix uh, that we're doing it. But as you can see, why well, the government's going to love it when we convert completely to this cashless society. They're going to tax you and I into oblivion. You won't be able to escape. You won't be able to access anything, okay? And, and as weird as this sounds, folks, these, these new kind of cards, these smart cards, listen, they're not only the rage in making payments. You say, well, I'm going to hold out. Mm, maybe not be able to much longer, okay? Billions of these cards, not millions, billions of these cards are being issued right now and have already been for many years. In fact, listen to this. Do you talk about the text? It said he made, he forced. You're going to have to do it sometime anyway. Right now in England, smart cards are not only commonplace, listen, they will soon become a necessity. Quote, England is expecting to have all governmental services online and will issue all their citizens with smart cards in order to access the system. That video is coming. In order to act, you have to have the card. Even here in the U.S., in light of the terrorist attacks, the Pentagon uh, uh, made smart cards mandatory for millions of troops and civilians to, sec listen, secure doors, getting cash, buying food, and checking out weapons. Isn't that convenient? Okay, but th they're also trying to get us to not only buy into this for the convenience factor, but also the so-called security factor. I mean, I mean, think of this, folks. If we truly went cashless, then that's going to spell the end of all kinds of thefts and horrible atrocities. One article says this, trying to get us to buy into it. It says this, listen, if we all went cashless, the immediate benefits would be profound and fundamental. Theft of cash would become impossible. Bank robberies and cash register robberies would simply cease to occur, right? No cash to take. Attacks on shopkeepers, taxi drivers, and cashiers would all end. Urban streets would become safer. Security costs and insurance rates would fall. Uh, property values would rise. Sales of illegal drugs, along with the crimes that follow, should diminish. Hospital emergency rooms would become less crowded. A change from cash to recorded electronic money would, would be accompanied by a flow, listen, of previously unpaid income tax revenues running in the tens of billions of dollars, and as a result, income tax rates could be lowered and the national debt could be reduced. Do, 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 do. It's the panacea for all. <laughs> That's what they're trying to get us to go into. Don't you guys feel safer already if we just get rid of Okay, but that's still not all. A cashless society, not only they say, provides all this great convenience, all in one nifty card. Um, and it's, it's going to be so secure, you can't get robbed anymore. Mm, we'll get to that in a second. But it's going to provide so much flexibility. And hey, Jim, who doesn't need flexibility in these crazy fast times, right? Got to be flexible. Okay, well, believe it or not, folks, they're giving you some options. But it's all leading towards the same direction. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, you see, this electronic cash can not only be used now to make payments, okay, on a smart card. But now the latest trend, and it's been a trend for quite some time in the Far East, it's now finally to take off here in America, is with your cell phone. Right now, folks, cell phones are doubling as mobile cash machines, and you could use your cell phone to make purchases just about anywhere in the world that has these systems set up from pizza to vendors, you name it, okay? And, and, and now just with the, 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 the wave of your phone, which you have in your hand, you can now make payment for things. It's almost like it's starting to head in a direction. Interesting. One, one guy says this. He says, hey, listen. He says, grabbing a burger is getting easier. And that's a serious thing, right? Okay. Don, is that where we're going today? Do you know? How much? Do, we'll talk about your calculator later. Okay. Uh, uh, assume, he says, you'll just have to only wave your cell phone as you pass through McDonald's drive through Immediate gratification is always the best marketing tool. There, listen, there's no dialing, there's no ATM, no fumbling for a wallet or drop coins. And you know when there's a delay, the kid's in the back seat. I want my Happy Meal! Isn't that an ironic thing? Happy Meal. You know, whatever. And you, none of that stuff. And he says, only radio frequency burgers. Oh, come on, moms, this is it. Give me my Happy Meal. Hey, if only we would switch. That's what we got. It's going to be awesome, okay? So, so just to be able to wave my phone, I'm making a payment to buy and sell, and you're, you're thinking, well, that's just too far out. Maybe the smart card thing, but really, are people using cell phones? Yes, they are, folks. Uh, but there's a little flaw in it. We'll get to that in a second. Let's take a look at the new trend. 
Well, cell phones, as you know, have evolved into tools used far more than just simple phone calls. Yeah, but did you know you can use a cell phone to pick up the check at a restaurant or pay for a purchase at a store? That's yeah, incredible what they're doing now. Seven on your side's Michael Finney is here to show us how that's done exactly. Yeah, I, I think we can all agree cell phones don't do enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take pictures, whatever. <laughs> Today's cell phones, you can check email, play games, take pictures, and of course actually talk on one. But soon, they'll also let you point and pay for things you want to buy. Cell phones are intended to help you stay connected. Now they can help you breeze through the checkout line, too. It's great, very convenient. Dale Archibald is using his cell to buy lunch. He simply points his phone at a special receiver, hits pay, and the bill is charged to his credit card. It saved me time, and I think it made everybody else in line behind me uh, happy. All you have to do is call your credit card company to activate the program. They'll download your personal info right into a special chip that's already in your phone. This chip contains the same type of information that the magnetic strip on the back of your credit card does. George Fernandez is with Viotech, a company developing this technology. He says it's not just your credit cards, you'll be able to leave it home. It can be credit, debit, or prepaid, or any sort of card. Though it's convenient, experts say there may be a downside. Well, the big risk is in an age of identity theft, that if you lose your phone, it's tantamount to losing your debit card or your credit card. Well, that, that, that wouldn't be good. That sounds like there's a security flaw in this whole scenario, this whole panacea, and we'll get to that in a second, okay? But you might be thinking, well, come on, Pastor Billy. I mean, this is just, once again, this wacky conspiracy. Would you please stay off that website, wackyconspiracyguy.org? Would you please at least do, whatever. No, excuse me? And you might be thinking, well, come on, okay, maybe in isolated places, maybe little spots here and there with that new generation that's open to this kind of stuff. Uh, but there's no way that the whole world is going to and shows any signs of converting uh, to a cashless society. Well, once again, you know the sarcasm, Bill. Uh, folks, we not only have, for the first time in mankind's history, individuals jumping on the bandwagon to go to that cashless society now, but for the first time in our history, we have whole countries that are not just promoting it, not just talking about it, they're already converting to it, whole countries, starting with Sweden. Let's take a look at what they're doing in their economy. Let's take a look. Karin Linder stocks up on supplies at the supermarket. But Karin, like most people here in Sweden, won't be paying with cash when she gets to the checkout. I personally never use cash. Uh, as you see here, I'm shopping. I use my scanner. Uh, when I check out, I'll use my credit card. And my banking, I do on my iPhone. So that's it. I don't need any cash. And in Sweden, only around 3% of all transactions are now made with cash. The Swedes have always adapted quickly to new technology. They've been using internet banking for around 20 years, and mobile phone use is among the highest in the world. Sweden was the first country in Europe to introduce these banknotes, but every year less of these are being printed, and it seems like Sweden is on a journey to be completely cashless. Most public transport is prepaid by using a phone or a credit card. And big businesses are adapting their services. By October, this bank in central Stockholm will be entirely cash-free. It's m most definitely consumer-driven. Uh, uh, we've seen for, for quite some time that uh, the need for, for cash-based services has reduced. And if you look for 2009 to, uh, to 2012, we actually reduced the number of teletransactions by 40%. But Sweden's drive to be cashless marches on, and others in Europe are likely to follow. Hmm. Can I translate that last statement there? They're likely to follow. In other words, uh, the whole world is eventually going to switch to this cashless society. Oh, and by the way, there already are, in case you haven't done the research. Uh, Sweden is not the only one. Right now, other countries that are wanting to go cashless as well is Japan. Nigeria is making a huge push for it. Uh, Australia and other countries in Europe, they're all saying, yes, we too want to become cashless for the first time in the history of mankind. Okay. But credit cards, they're not uh, being left out. Banks, certainly, they, they, they're jumping on this bandwagon. How can we benefit from this? How can we profit from it? Right now, credit card companies are turning. See, whether you want to go to it or not. Credit card companies are taking what used to be the normal credit card, and they're now switching out it with a smart card. And you may have one right now today, and you may not even know it. Okay, with a microchip inside of it, okay? And believe it or not, folks, that's not the only sneaky th uh, thing that they're doing. Believe it or not, they're desperately trying to hide from you and I. There's one problem with these smart cards. You could easily get ripped off electronically. Let's take a look at how smart these smart cards are. Let's take a look.
a sneaky crime, stealing credit card and private information by a process called skimming. California recently passed a law making it a crime. But for someone willing to break the law, these high-tech cards have a privacy loophole that could make you an easy target. Jason Martinez live in Hollywood to explain that one, Jason. Yeah, Emmett, I mean, first let me show you how these new credit cards work. They use the same technology as some of your work ID cards where you hold it up to the reader and it scans and it's got the information for the computer to read. But imagine this is the credit card. That's the cash register. It's supposed to make life easier for you and more convenient, but does it make life easier for identity thieves too? Now there's a simpler way to pay. The credit card companies love this new technology called radio frequency identification, also known as RFID. Instead of swiping your card, all you have to do is hold it up to a scanner and you're out the door. Sounds easy, and it may be, but could it also make the crime of stealing your identity easy? The idea is it's a lot quicker. Florida businessman Walt Augustinowitz shows us just how simple it could be for a thief to use this new technology to steal some of your personal information. I bought a, a credit card reader for $9 on eBay and uh, had it shipped to me, hooked it up to my laptop, waved my credit card in front of it, and there was all my information on screen. You don't even have to have your card out to have your identity stolen. It could be in your wallet, in your back pocket, and all it takes is for somebody with a reader to walk by and scan it. He just got my credit card number. And it's not just your credit card number in jeopardy. Some driver's licenses, passports, and ID cards also have RFID technology. MasterCard and Visa want you to be using these new cards. We put together a group of about 10 business people who volunteer to test their vulnerability. <laughs> what I'm trying to show is how somebody even with no technology experience at all could buy something like this off eBay, hook it up with a laptop and go out and do this in public. Watch what happened when the very first volunteer walked up to see if any of her cards could be detected. You can just put it near there. Got one. With a $9 reader that anyone can buy off the internet, the credit card number was scanned, and after the beep, a computer screen showed her card number and expiration date, and she didn't even know her card had the new technology. This is totally pretty scary. Yeah, this is really scary. Um, I think I realize I have these cards in my, in my wallet all this time. Credit card companies say many consumers feel more secure with PayPass because they never have to turn the card over to a cashier and it never leaves their hand. Hmm, interesting phrase, never leaves your hand. We'll get to that in just a second. Well, wait a second, I don't know about you guys, it leads to a, a nagging question to me. Well, this is crazy, man. I mean, it's one thing to have new technology, but why in the world uh, would you release to the public uh, a technology that's not secure at all? This is crazy. Why would you do that? Uh, in fact, folks, believe it or not, it's so obvious. That how many of you guys ever watched the show Mythbusters? You have to say that slow or you sound like Elmer Fudd. Trust me, I tried it earlier. Okay, Mythbusters. Okay, well, believe it or not, folks, they actually produced a show a while back that, that uh, exposed, they were going to expose the security flaw and all these things and how easy it is to get ripped off nowadays electronically. They were called on the carpet by all the credit card companies and they forbid them and said, shut your mouth. You will never air that program. You tell me there's not a conspiracy going on. They admitted it at this conference. Check this out. The one I wish you would revisit more is uh, RFID. Now I know that... Does Carrie still have the RFID oh. tag in her arm? Dude, the RFID thing. Yeah. Why did you not... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm not... You, you, it's, it's just it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I well, discovered... Here's what, hap here's, here's what happened. I'm not sure how much of the story I'm allowed to tell, but I'll tell you what I know. Um, We were, we were going to do RFID, and we, uh, on several levels, you know, how hackable, how reliable, how trackable, et cetera, et cetera. And we, uh, one of our researchers called up Texas Instruments, and they arranged a conference call between, uh, I think, Tori and the head producer over there for the other team, Linda Wolkovich, and uh, one of the technicians at Texas Instruments. This was the, we're supposed to have a conference call to talk about the technology on like Tuesday at 10 a.m. And Tuesday at 10 a.m., Linda and Tori get on the phone and they, uh, Texas Instruments comes on, <clears throat> along with Chief Legal Counsel for American Express, Visa, Discover, <laughs> and everybody else. I mean, and I got chills just as I described it. They, they were way, way outgunned. And they absolutely 
made it really clear to Discovery that they were not going to air this episode talking about how hackable this stuff was. And Discovery backed way down, being a large corporation who depends upon the revenue of the advertisers. Uh, and now it's on Discovery's radar. They won't let us go near it. So I'm sorry. No. We are. It, it's, it's just one of those things. But man, that was a really. Your story still gets a little white when he describes that phone conversation. <laughs> Man, that leads to nagging question number two. Well, why are you doing this then? You're not just knowingly releasing something. You know it. Uh, this new electronic payment system to the public. Okay, but you know it's got security flaws. You know it's not uh, reliable. You know there's flaws in it. And even when people try to expose it, you're making them shut their mouths. Why would you do that? Well, because you've been paying attention ever since the one world government topic. There's a, a, a process here. It's called you create a crisis, you manage the outcome, right? And so maybe this is where I'm kind of thinking, well, first of all, get all of this use to all this new cashless society and these different forms of electronic payment, whether it's a smart card or a cell phone. And, uh, but see, there's an obvious problem with either one of those two scenarios. First of all, you could lose the card, right? Uh, you could lose your cell phone. Uh, or somebody could steal either one. Or even now, it can be skimmed by somebody and they'll still take your information. Hey! And it turns into this big old giant crisis. Oh! Isn't identity theft a big issue nowadays? Oh, let's go. Uh, hey, I know. You appear on the scene and you say, okay, I think we got it figured out. You can trust us. Um, wouldn't it be great, now that you're used to all this nifty, convenient, secure, awesome technology, uh, if you're not just carried out on the outside of you, because you could lose it, get ripped off, huh? wouldn't it be great if, if you could put it on the inside of you? You can't steal it then, can you? And believe it or not, folks, that's the new way of shopping. Revelation 13. And IBM has already started the propaganda for our new way to shop at the store. This is an actual commercial. Check this out. your receipt. Check outlines. Who needs them? Have a nice day. This is the future of e-business. 2,000 years ago, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle John is trying to describe somehow this one guy is going to be able to control all the economies, the money, and, and one guy is going to have the ability to determine whether or not you get to buy or sell. A couple more things and we'll close, folks. MasterCard, another interesting thing, you put all this together. They purchased uh, a while back a 51% got control of a smart card company called Mondex. Uh, and Mondex uh, is uh, an electronic cash system in the world that allows for multiple currencies on the card. Mondex was so excited about this backing from MasterCard. Listen, they said this is the final stage. The final stage in becoming a global reality. With MasterCard's backing, there is nothing to stop Mondex from now becoming the global standard. And then if that wasn't weird enough, another credit card company, the president of Visa, has hinted on doing the next step. Uh, taking these tiny microchips in your card and put them on, literally, their words, much handier things. Like let's embed that same chip now on your watch or a ring that's on your hand. And I've got to think, well, gee whiz, what's next? Some sort of smart card, body implant, or tattoo? Yeah, exactly, folks. Do you see where it's leading? Step by step, slowly, methodically. In fact, it's not just available. We have people lining up ready to do it right now. Let's take a look at this guy. Is it the way of the future or just another fad? Seems some people are considering throwing away keys to the house and car in favor of a computer chip implanted in the wrist. A wave of the hand and the door opens right before their eyes. But as Jennifer Kirby reports, this apparent trend has its critics. Keith Kennedy always hated fumbling with his keys. Now he only uses one thing for all the doors he needs to unlock. Access granted. It's an electronic chip 
implanted in his wrist. Basically it's just, uh, it's convenient. I'm a little bit more comfortable with having more security to my house, uh, my car and my business. His business is a body piercing shop, but his passion is this new chip. He worked with a computer expert to develop the software. The chips work like swipe cards. Electronic readers identify people by their codes. Basically, a pill goes in. Larissa Kraft got a chip to get into her house. I have to spend five, ten minutes going through my bag to find my keys. That's no longer an issue. Right now, this kind of technology is used for tracking cattle and identifying lost pets. Retailers also use it for tracking packages through the system. As for chipping people, a nightclub in Spain is doing it so patrons don't have to carry membership cards. And a few people in the United States have chips for quick access to their medical record. Access granted. Payment accepted. Thank you for using the Antichrist Mark of the Beast system. Have a nice day. We are that close, folks. One last thing and we'll close, folks. Uh, a lot of people don't realize Mondex, which they're, at least they're saying that they're going to become the world's first possible global standard with this backing from MasterCard. Uh, Mondex is short in form. This is wild. You've got to check this out and go home. Uh, Mondex is a short in form of monetary dexter. Go look up in a dictionary and you will see that monetary means pertaining to money and dexter means right hand. Nifty choice of names. Folks, for the first time in our history, we're not only seeing all the world's economies coming together as one, but we are seeing all the uh, economies around the world becoming electronic. We're turning into a cashless society. And I don't know about you, but I'd say that's a loving way for God to hopefully get our attention before it's too late. Okay? And this is what we've been seeing, folks, time and time and time again. Jesus said, Luke 21, 28, when these things begin to take place, what do you do? Stand up, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Folks, as Christians, we should be excited. That means Jesus Christ is coming back to get us. But as always, folks, as we close, if you're not a Christian and you're here today, would you please listen to another warning from God? He is not always going to give you the ability to respond. One day, it's going to be too late. The Bible clearly says this. He says this, listen. Uh, so the Holy Spirit, if he says, Hebrews 3, 7 to 11, today, if you hear his voice, if God is tugging at your heart right now, I got to get right with God. I got to take him up on his offer of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. If you hear that voice now, don't harden your hearts. As the people of Israel did in the rebellion during the time of testing the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me for 40 years and saw what they did, God says, that is why I was angry with that generation. I said, that's it. I've had it. Their hearts are always going astray. They have not known my ways. And God says, I declared on oath of my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And the passage says that they had an unbelieving heart. Don't sit here today after all this evidence. You've got more evidence now than most of the people on the planet that the Bible is real, God is real, Jesus Christ is coming back. What more does he have to give you before you will respond to his love and mercy. Don't leave here with an unbelieving heart. As the invitation is given, respond before it's too late. Amen? Let's pray. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church, and I hope you enjoyed today's study. But before you go, let me ask you one final question. Are you sure that if you were to die today, that you go to heaven and not hell? Before you answer that, let me share a couple things with you. Did you know that the Bible says that God is holy and that we are not? And the Bible also says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness is death. In other words, when we die, and it's coming for each one of us, we're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, but it's going to happen. The Bible says, therefore, since the wages of our sin is death, we deserve to die and go straight to hell and not to heaven. And that's bad enough, but to make matters worse, we don't want to admit this. God already knows he knows uh, all of our behavior, everything, our thoughts, what we've done, what even we're going to do. He knows it all. He's gone. Even though he already knows this, we don't want to admit this. And so out of love and mercy, God gave us something called his law or the Ten Commandments. It's kind of like his x-ray into our heart to show us what he already knows, that he is holy and that we are not. And it's this unholiness or sin that separates us from him. Let's take a look at God's x-ray, if you will, his divine law, to show us what he already knows. The Ten Commandments, uh, the ninth one, says this, you shall not bear false witness. 
okay? That's called lying, okay? And if you've ever told a lie once, which we all have, myself included, the Bible says that makes you a liar, okay? The, the, another commandment says you shall not steal, okay? Uh, and you might think, well, that's that something that everybody does. Well, it doesn't make it right, and it demonstrates what God is trying to show us, that uh, we all have sin, and it's separating us from him. Even if you took a pencil in the third grade from somebody, if you did it without permission, that's stealing. And so now you've become a thief. The Bible says that you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And how interesting it is and unfortunate that the only name under heaven by which men might be saved, the name Jesus Christ, has now become a common cuss word. The Bible says that God is so holy that even his name is holy. If you've taken the Lord's name in vain and used it as a cuss word or even flippantly, the Bible calls that the sin of blasphemy. And so now you become a blasphemer. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus says if you even look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. And finally, the Bible says uh, you shall not murder. And you might think, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? Well, again, the Bible says that the sin of hatred is the same as the sin of murder. The only difference is you pulled the trigger, if you will, in your heart. You wish they were dead. And in God's eyes, it's the same thing in principle. Folks, that's only just a couple of the Ten Commandments. We didn't even go through all of them. But I think you're starting to get the picture. The Bible is correct. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, myself included. And that we are separated from God as a result. And so when our time comes, we're not automatically going to heaven. We are headed for judgment. We are headed for hell. Now let me tell you the good news. The good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Jesus Christ died on the cross. It was the death penalty of its day. He paid in full uh, the price for our sins to be forgiven. Let me give you an analogy. For instance, even today, we could see that a person could commit a crime. Uh, they, they cannot reverse it. The, the sentence has been passed. The judge has... Uh, slammed his gavel and they are ushered off into their jail cell and in this particular crime they are going to receive the death penalty and so they're behind bars just waiting for the time waiting for the call for them to go and uh, receive the death penalty but believe it or not as we know there is a way that a person can get off a death row and that is if the one in authority the governor would grant them a pardon now they didn't earn it uh, they certainly don't deserve it and there's nothing they could do uh, to earn it because nothing can reverse their crime, okay? Yet the one in authority has that ability to grant them a pardon. Well, can I tell you something? That's what God has done through Jesus Christ. The cross was the death penalty of the day. God sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to take the death penalty in our place, and that if we would just receive his pardon for all of our sins, God is willing to to allow us to get off a death row. He's willing to forgive us completely of all of our sins. That's the good news that I want to share with you. God loves you. The Bible says that God is not willing that anyone should perish, but everyone come to repentance. Won't you, if that's you, call upon the name of Jesus Christ right now? Won't you ask him to forgive you of your sins? The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Won't you do that now, wherever you are? Please, take God up on his amazing, loving offer. I'll let you down. Man will let you down. People will let you down. But God never will. He wants to adopt you into his forever family. He loves you. He's willing to forgive you of anything and everything you've ever done, past, present, and future. It's amazing. Please, call upon Jesus now. Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church. If there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Our number and information will come up here on the screen here shortly. And remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 
702-452-8956. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.